Why you call me too deep? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah. It's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and... The Darkest Side of the Night. Evil. Aw, uh, yeah. And guess what? You're not in the back room today. I'm in the back room with you. So we're actually together doing this podcast. Yeah, let's just, uh, like, let's just do this. This is what we're going to make editing a uh, quick, fast, and easy <laughs> thing on this one, at least. A little bit easier than it normally is. And it's actually pretty easy. We have a pretty good uh, ebb and flow when we do this. <laughs> but uh, here we are. We're back again. Still trudging, still trekking through Camp Crystal Lake, but this time we're leaving the lake for the ocean for... <laughs> the ocean, the lake that leads into an ocean. All the way to New York City. Get a rope. <laughs> uh, that's right, we're talking about Rob Hedden's Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Man, uh... <laughs> This is, yeah, part two of the four-part Kane Hodder uh, saga of the Friday the 13th movies. I almost called it a Kane Hodder trilogy. I almost interjected and said trilogy, but you just trilogy. said Trilogy. It's a quadrilogy. quadrilogy. Which was made popular by the Alien franchise before. Yeah, I didn't they, know that was a word before. <laughs> no, like, quadrilogy. Like, Definitely not. Make that shit up, or is that an actual thing? That is that is fake. And it, it would have been a quadrilogy until they put 47 other shitty movies on top of it. But that's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother time. Maybe that'll be a future uh, franchise we cover <laughs> beginning then is the Alien series. Yes, I, I'm all about that. At least the good ones. But <laughs> No, if we're doing it, we gotta go all. It's oh, all boy. or nothing. Just like Friday the 13th is all or nothing. So... If uh, the last episode was my introduction and my favorite Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. this is right there behind as far as my favorite of the series uh, for a similar reason because this is the first Friday the 13th I watched solo, beginning yes. to end, on my own. And it's one of the most fun, and it's actually one that the, you and my wife are both like, yeah, we really like Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah, and I, I'm going to sound like a broken record because I always say this, but it wasn't until the internet became a thing when I started realizing people don't like this. You know, as a kid, I was like, this is so awesome. Granted, I understand that a lot of the New York stuff is swapped out for Vancouver and they only spend the, <laughs> the final reel essentially in New York. But, man, uh, the look of Jason the creative kills, the whole like MTV-esque atmosphere of this movie is just like, it's super fun. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's it's just got that right amount of, of silliness to it, but not necessarily taking it uh, like super goofy. I will get to the super goofy because I can't <laughs> talk about this movie without talking about it. Uh, but I, I, I feel this is for the un-New un York educated folks. <laughs> like, two Midwestern kids like us, now now old men, like, I I would not, you know, think twice, like, yeah, that's probably what New York looks like. That's what <laughs> New York is, is like. I'm sure people are getting mugged in dirty-ass <laughs> alleys with rats floating in uh, <laughs> toxic waste jugs or yeah, whatever that is. Giant barrels of sludge. It's like, this is the same shit that's gonna blind Matt Murdock and create the Ninja Turtles any day now. <laughs> uh, Alright, so I mean, we kind of already covered it, but do you want to give the folks at home a brief plot synopsis of Jason Takes Vancouver? I mean, Jason Takes Manhattan? That's everybody's, like, quick-witted thing. Is, That's Jason Takes Vancouver. Hey! Hey -oh. Bet you didn't see that joke coming. Ha 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 ha. Well, we start this film with Jason Voorhees still dead. <laughs> He's at the bottom of the lake with oh. the uh, part of that deck on top of him now. All wicked waterlogged with his arms stuck up in the air. Yeah, and since then, I don't know if it was before or post, but now there's a power line that is running underneath the lake that is conveniently right by like Jason's leg. <laughs> and just needs a small, you know, boat anchor to pull it towards him and it'll send shock waves of electricity through Jason's body, which breaks up the rubble. Because I'm, I'm assuming he's only stuck down there because 
the dock boards are holding him down, I, I guess. But yeah, some kids cruising in their own mini yacht accidentally resurrect Jason. He gets on that boat that floats to another boat and he gets on the bigger boat <laughs> and that boat sinks but they get on a third boat you know i'm gonna have to say it but uh we're gonna need a bigger boat uh, but the boat goes from small to big to a little raft and <laughs> so three boats from uh was it grain valley new jersey all the way to manhattan new york three boats and a little lady uh yeah there is a lot of Boat travel. I guess I never really. I guess I never really thought about the three boat theory. <laughs> a hashtag three boat theory. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, could you imagine if it was a dip? Like if it was land based, and like he had to, like Jason got on a on a camper, <laughs> and then he got onto a like commuter bus, <laughs> and then from that commuter bus he's on, you know, like well, a, he does also ride a subway in this movie. So three yeah. boats in a subway. <laughs> Now we're having a song almost. Yep. He's just going to use different modes of transportation to get around. Like, <laughs> now it would be, well, he's on escalator. Well, deleted scene, he's on that escalator, too. That's true. <laughs> Where he knocks, knocks somebody, face palms him on an escalator. I always forget about that. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I would go back because I used to call bullshit all the time about that power cable running through the lake. I, I still kind of do. And I'm like, I don't think that's a thing. And then, uh, lo and behold, our tech guy, Remix, was like, actually, uh, you know, he pulled the um, actually, on me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was like, this this is a thing. They run electrical or internet and all this other stuff through water. I'm like, well, I get, okay, I stand corrected. I mean, I guess, I, I guess that's a thing. Like, how else would, like, islands and stuff get fucking electricity? I don't know. Uh, generators? <laughs> uh, that never, I never really thought of that not not being a possibility. What I just was like, really, is they just threw that shit down there, and they're like, "There's a body down here," and like, just <laughs> lay it close by it, don't disturb it, move on. We're not, right. we're not cops. We're we're electricians, right? <laughs> In wetsuits, just just move on with shit. Why not teach astronauts how to drill? <laughs> yeah. So, probably the most. Super convenient thing in this whole movie history is uh, in the previous film, Jason's mask is split in half. He is maskless, mm -hmm. uh, soaking up water at the bottom of this lake. After he is accidentally resurrected, he boards this boat with these two kids on it, which one of the kids, of course, has to be a practical joker, play a prank. Hey, hey. And he has a, uh, what did Adam and Joe call it? Like a piss colored, mm -hmm. stained hockey mask that conveniently somehow has an axe wound in the same place that he had an axe wound got, in his old mask. Got that at the, you know, the Crystal Lake Spirit Halloween. They, they, they just sell Jason Voorhees novelties there. Obviously, because in the next film, they have a fucking diner with the Jason as dead sale. So I'll... Maybe that was the first failed business. They're like, <laughs> we're going to do prop bits like Blair Witch 2 kind of shit. And they're like, maybe hey, we'll just go into being a restaurant instead. <laughs> it's our our first failed business, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making <laughs> hockey, man. They're like, this is not where the money's at. We Cash in. Eventually, we'll start being cooks. <laughs> we'll make 3B burgers. I'm down. Let's do it. It's beef, bacon, and beef. <laughs> and broccoli. Broccoli. Ooh. A broccoli burger. I wouldn't, I wouldn't not try that. All right, we, we're going to do it. I'm doing it today. So when, so when the YouTube movie business fails us, we're getting into the restaurant business next. <laughs> I don't cook anything, so that'll be an adventure. <laughs> and this is also... Uh, Kane gets he gets some of his regeneration abilities back. We don't see any bones sticking at him on this time. He's and he got gloves while he was under the, under the lake. So he has gloves. He has and I've never noticed it until he, I I was spoiled to listen to the Adam and Joe commentary where you can see like at his elbow in some shots like you can see like where the suit ends. Yeah, <laughs> like it's his, like rolling up, starting yeah, to roll up in like, some like, shots. Like, like his long johns are underneath. Where like the suit ends and uh, Kane begins. Yeah, that and especially with the Blu-ray releases now, like it's so <laughs> evident. Like uh, when he electrocutes uh, Wayne and the sparks are hitting him, you he's can, an asshole. Yeah, Wayne's an asshole and a dweeb. <laughs> but if you uh, if you look close, you can see the mesh on the eyes. This is where that starts to be the trend of like, oh shit, they lit it too well, they're too close, um, you know, and Which, so you start to see that mesh which I, I mean just let him have eyes I mean you could see 
there's like a couple of shots in the last movie you could see one eye mm-hmm. really like lit and like it kind of gave it a creepy look to see one eye and this one they're like fuck eyes so he doesn't you don't need to see <laughs> Kane's eyes right and that's like in seven it gives Kane the ability to be a little bit more expressive because he's completely covered except for that one eye there's no lenses in it or anything it's his real eye <laughs> And you get to realize. and you get to Jason takes Manhattan and it's like nah we're just gonna put pantyhose on the mask you gotta you know you're, you're just a, a mindless killing machine but uh, uh, it's still fine because Kane's performance bleeds right through all the heavy breathing all the like steam rising off him because you can tell it's fucking miserable cold in Vancouver <laughs> or whatever and this is also the movie where he uh, gains. Um, was it shift abilities? Oh yeah, <laughs> like from bad, the, from bad the editing. Game. Bad editing creates his uh, uh, train, like whatever you want to call it. Yeah, his shift, his shift, his shift, his shift power. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I'd rather see that. I mean, I'd rather be. I'm more fine with him shifting than like in that power room where clearly he's too big to be moving around in there. Like I don't, it, I can't really take Jason as seriously if he's like maneuvering and like ducking and shit <laughs> underneath. Like sliding, doing that shimmy sidewalk to get around in this this tight ass uh, bowels of the of the ship. Right. Like it just it just wouldn't work. So just yeah, just give him that shift ability where he'll just suddenly be in front of somebody. Yeah, uh, because it does kind of take the power away from him being menacing if you see him kind of fumbling and stuff. Because one of the things that uh, Kane says about his Jason is he never looks down. Like nope. he always looks directly at the target and moves forward. So. If you were to show him kind of, you know, trying to move nimbly and do these things, it wouldn't be as effective as, uh, you know, like uh, CC is running and then Jason's just in front of her with the guitar flop. Like, that's all we need. We get that shot of him coming down the steps and it's creepy, but if we were to sh- see him get <clears throat> off of the steps, you know, because, like, I don't know, I think it would look kind of kind of goofy. I'm just picturing uh, Jason trying to shimmy that sidewalk shimmy through, like, a narrow walk space and that <laughs> But yeah, I mean that's that's impressive on a different, like on a filmmaking level. Now is when he's coming down those steps after JJ. Of course, I meant JJ, yeah, not just, CC. CC. That's, that's scream too. My bad. When he's coming down those steps, one you can hear it is boom, boom, boom. But I can't imagine because those steps kind of are they're designed kind of weird. Like I would, it'd be hard not to look down to see where you're going because there's hand railings, but mm-hmm. they go straight down. So you're kind of Real taking, steep. <laughs> yeah, super steep. You're taking like a half a step forward to the next step, and imagine like you're not looking at your feet. You're looking straight ahead, not down where your feet's going. And you have a mask that's putting another what, like half inch of gap between where you and what you can see is. So your depth perception is off. I'm like, nah. Yeah, I uh, after working on tapehead with and Dylan not being able to see, I could only imagine he would have broke his neck trying to go down those steps. It had to be three of us at the bottom of the steps with our arms out ready to catch him when he falls. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what about favorite kill in this movie? You got a favorite kill? I, I do have a favorite kill because this is actually a kill I argued with the wife about. And we mm. actually, when we got to meet Kane, we had, had him uh, sort of solve the debate between us. And I had him sign the back of my autograph that I won the debate. Because <laughs> the wife's uh, most like impactful kill for her is the dude in the sauna they get stabbed with a sauna rock which was totally an aftershot because he was supposed to get stabbed with darts in the eyes yeah he's supposed to have darts in the eyes and even Kane told us like you know why he's got that towel over his face like that's a different actor I mean, that was a reshoot later so they didn't even have that same guy anymore <laughs> which I mean like I wouldn't Shit. even have thought like I wouldn't even put two 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 together anyway because he's Shemping got that it, yeah. he's got that mask like that headgear uh, yeah that headgear on when he's boxing Julius so I've been like you could have put anybody there and I've been like if he's saying he fought Julius I'm assuming it's the same guy <laughs> right but she always thought that rock going into his gut was was the most uh, or it looks like it's in the gut but then they, that that top shot it looks like it's in his chest mm-hmm. that's her most impactful I always thought when he takes Uncle Charles. Oh boy! And yeah. drowns him in a in a, a a drum of sludge upside down. I was like that. <laughs> that is. I'll pay you, please. <laughs> that I always thought I was like, oh, that would be horrible to drown Ugh. upside down in New York sludge. You know, there's like 
fucking all kinds of gross shit in that barrel too. Like, not just the surface stuff because you see the rat floating and stuff, but you know there's all <laughs> kinds of other nasty shit. It's <laughs> it's it's like Campbell's soup. It's chunky in there. Oh fuck. <laughs> that's gross. Super chunky. So that is my and Kane's like, yeah, that's the worst kill to like if you were <laughs> if you had to go some way in the movie. You think that was a that stunt way. man? Like, there's no way that actor was like, yeah, go ahead, fucking <laughs> slam me in that shit. I mean, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it was a real guy at least taking the plunge in. But then, you know, the some, wide, yeah. he has some fake legs that he's holding on to when he's doing the drowning part. I, I, I don't know. You think those are fake legs? You don't think that's a stunt man? <sighs> I would want to say that's a, that's a f- set of fake legs, but it's probably a stunt man. <laughs> Like today, I would feel like that's totally fake, a fake body. But I'm like in 1989, I'm like, nah, yeah, that's probably a dude. <laughs> that's probably a dude they paid somebody handsomely for. Yeah, that's Rick Dalton or uh, whatever. <laughs> Rick Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite kill, which I've talked about a million times on our channel and uh, all over the place. Yeah, I, I talk about this all the time. But obviously, it's Julius, right? Because he's a boxer. He, he's one of the only people in the entire franchise to put his hands up, go toe to toe with Jason, and uh, it's just it always left an impact on me. I love it. No matter how many times I see it, it never gets old. Like if I'm just scrolling through YouTube and it's like Julius's death scene, I'm like, yep, I'll just stop and watch it. Like I don't even need to be watching the movie to be like, I'm in the mood to watch Julius die, beat the <laughs> shit out of Jason for a hot minute. Watch him just wreck his fucking hands. Ugh, yeah, super good. I feel like my hands hurt watching how hands, at least, in, maybe it's in, this is my mind. I feel like his hands here, like his fingers and shit, look super swole. Like oh, they're yeah. ready. Like if you just put a pin prick in one of his hands, it just explode from <laughs> the swelling on it. <laughs> just straight up punching a hockey mask. Ugh. It's meant to stop hockey pucks right? from busting your face, and he's just swinging at it. He's undefeated, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's undefeated and won. Yeah, <laughs> today. I also I love that in the movie when he is boxing that guy like on the ship, and they're just like on a couple of like tumbling mats. I'm like, what is this? Is this like, is it a sparring? Is it is it sanctioned? What what's happening? Like, because there's a crowd around, everyone's cheering. Is there, is there a Crystal Lake boxing club in like, high does, school? Yeah, does he count that? Like, he be he knocks that guy out. Like, does that go on his record? That's not. That's like some. That's like a early UFC when people are like, "I'm 500 and 0 in my street fights." Like that doesn't make any sense. I just watch it nowadays. I'm like, those the 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 crowd of like five or six other teenagers. I was like, they're too close. Yeah, way too close. Someone's gonna get. Someone's gonna catch one of those hands because <laughs> they're just right. Like imagine like a full fledged like fight going on and you're within two feet of it and you're one of the spectators. Like I'm gonna get hit. Yeah, I need to back up. <laughs> I wish I still had the numbers on on hand. You'd have to go way back on our live stream. Which uh, another thing that makes this a sentimental movie. This is the first live stream movie we covered where we became monetized on YouTube. That is true. But I did I did some math. You have to go back to the live stream to see it. I was calculating like what it would cost all these these kids, or what it would cost each individual kid of this graduating class, because they're a graduating class of a high school that is taking a trip to New York City from New Jersey to New York, and it's like five or six times the cost if they just drove them there on a bus, mm-hmm. <laughs> plus re- rent, plus renting the boat. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, because you got to pay the whole staff of the boat. Like they got cooks and shit. Like it's not. It's not I don't like know if they had any, like I didn't see no cooks. They apparently had a full bar that was sealed off <laughs> and a dance floor, which comes into play later. Feels like they would have to have cooks. Like, what are they supposed to eat? How long's that trip gonna take? I, you know. Technically, I think we looked up the trip would not even take an hour, two hours to do. So. They're really That's ridiculous. Like they're really stretching out the time <laughs> it takes to get from Green Valley, New Jersey to Manhattan, New York. <laughs> We're just going to float on down and it's going to cost you a fucking million dollars. <laughs> yeah, maybe they just didn't use any any like uh, gas or anything. They just like, let's just use the wind. Let the, the current wind. take us. If the current takes us to Manhattan, then that'll easily take up four, five, 12 hours of time. <laughs> But yeah, it would have been faster, easier, and cheaper to just bust these kids. To- Two hours, you wouldn't even have had time to, like, they do all kinds of shit in that yeah, montage. They're, like, shuffleboard, they're fucking shooting skeet 
things. They're dancing. <laughs> if I'm supposed to be doing a tourist thing with my class in a different city, I am not an hour beforehand getting into a boxing match. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense now that you say it would only take two hours. Yeah, it really yeah. bothers me. No. That really fucking bothers me. They have time to have boxing matches, go to saunas, relax from it, go to the dance floor, yeah, coke. play the shuffleboard, walk around. Get thrown off, get pulled back on. Which would have killed her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any cruise ship, like, I think there's actually a whole series on ID on the ID channel like killing people on cruise ships. What? Like just just nudge them off, and as soon as you nudge someone off a cruise ship, the undertow. Yeah, they'll go underneath the boat, and they are not going to be able to get out. And even if they get to the end of the boat, they get chopped up by their seventy foot long propellers. I was like, she's dead. That's why that boat's not moving. In yeah, that shot. Yeah, there you go. That's why that so boat they takes... left her ass behind or or ran her over. Yeah, the current is what's their driving force there. So they have plenty of time to nudge a bitch off of the side of the boat and have someone else jump off and catch her and bring her back on board because the boat ain't moving. <laughs> if that boat was moving like they show in scenes during the rough seas, she'd be left in the dust. Or, you know, in, in the drowns. Well, now I hate this movie. You've, you've poked too many holes in it. I, I can't enjoy it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the more holes you poke, I think the more fun the, the it is. The better it is, yeah. Because uh, then in this movie, we also get our um, our third iteration of Crazy Ralph. It's not Crazy Ralph. It's Crazy Deckhand Man, uh, you know. and uh, He doesn't get a name. I, I, I feel bad he doesn't have a name. Right. <laughs> Died without a name? Sucks. No uh, name. <laughs> We discovered him. We should name him. <laughs> Thinking, uh, uh, Officer McManus or Detective McManus. Detective McManus. Ooh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, the old deckhand. Um, he's our harbinger. He's poking around. He's constantly. I don't ah, know what his you, job is. Is he, just a, is he just a maintenance guy on the boat, or? I, yeah. What's a, what's the yeah? What's the proper job of a deckhand? Is that just? They, they, do everything? I'm totally taking Captain Ron logic like he's swap, like he's just like changing the oil in the in the engine and clean up shit and he does that good, he'll be promoted from swap to mate. Do you need to Do you need to do that on a two hour boat trip? <laughs> Is his Well I guess he's if he's maintenance you know, in case shit goes wrong, you gotta have a dude. Well, he can't be the maintenance guy because that there is a maintenance yeah, the, yeah, guy. Yeah, the handsome guy. Yeah, the handsome guy that gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck he meant. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's gotta be just like the grease man. I mean, he's kind of semi dirty. Maybe he's just the grease man of the boat. Mm -hmm. Like the dude, like in Waterworld, the guys that are shoveling the coal <laughs> into the machine. Like, maybe he's one, he's that guy. I hate Waterworld. <laughs> I love Waterworld. <laughs> That's beside the point. Though. Yeah. <laughs> But there, there's an interesting crew of of people on this ship. I mean, we mentioned Wayne, who looks like he belongs in Wayne's world as one of the extras with long hair. Mm -hmm. You have Julius, the, the the star athlete. Tamara. Tamara, the the the, 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 bitch. <laughs> the bitch cocaine addict that's trying to seduce the what is his? Is he a headmaster? What is Uncle I, Charles? I think he's I think he's a teacher. But I don't know, because he, he has to get the biology thing presented to him. Which makes no goddamn sense. No. If, it's, if you've already graduated, your, your, your future is not dependent on one biology project. Right. If it's swinging that close, it's, like, it's, it's, it's over. It's yeah. already over. <laughs> I'll make sure you never get into any film school. Ever! Uh, J uh, Jensen Daggett plays uh, Rennie, the lead girl. Um, which I love for the original, like, who they wanted for that role. Was it... Who was it? It was Berkeley from uh, Saved by the Bell. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, was it, uh, not Xander Berkeley. Elizabeth Berkeley. Yeah, blanking on her name, yeah. Same hair, almost, too. I was looking at the hair, and I'm like, that looks like they're Liz very, Berkeley kind of hair. Yeah, they're very similar. And then, uh, uh, what's the what's the goofy kid that likes her? Is it Sean? Sean that looks like a, a borderline Luke Perry 90210 kid. Uh, I hate him, but he is better than uh, when you watch Crystal Lake Memories and uh, his name is Jason, the screen test stuff, because they originally cast somebody different. Yeah, he had some and, stiff lines. Yeah, uh, it's okay. But uh, so he does, uh, the, the new guy uh, does a good job, but he's got, I don't know what it is about the Friday the 13th franchise and like 
the the second lead man having like a super soft skull. You know, uh, <laughs> Kevin gotta, Kevin Spiritus in Seven has a super soft skull. Uh, this asshole, every nudge, every bump, every you look at him sideways, he's unconscious for seven minutes. It's like, what's happening? I have a CTE off <laughs> who has more brain damage between him and Kevin Spiritus. Yep. Uh, uh, Tommy Jarvis, uh, Tom Matthews did not put up with this shit. No. <laughs> he's... The only time he is knocked out is when he is drowned in that lake by Jason. <laughs> is he killed? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have we have we have him. We have Uncle Charles, which is the he's dual rolling playing uh, like the non-believer. Always they always gotta have somebody that's going. Jason Voorhees has been dead for years. Mm-hmm. Get I'm me, in charge of this ship. You give me a goddamn live suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Always have someone that's gonna naysay it. And then this he's he's also the the male counterpart to Tamara that's like, I can't wait to see this fucking guy die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's also the catalyst for this weird little backstory. Which there's doesn't weird, make a lot of sense, but there's again bizarre backstories in this. But again, it's fine. Like you said, the more weird shit, I guess the better, right? And so we come to find out that uh, Uncle Charles is the legal guardian of Rennie, and when she was a little girl, she couldn't swim. He killed her parents, I feel. Uh, yeah, he's a bad dude. <laughs> There's some real gnarly shit going on with him, and he tells her that uh, if she doesn't learn how to swim, Jason will pull her under and throws her ass in the lake, and then we get this... He pushes her. Yeah, we get this little uh, apparition of Jason with like kind of long, stringy hair, and I yeah. think that's the the best little kid Jason in this movie because they do it a couple different times and then the the main one is like a pudgy little kid. Yeah, it's like one of the producers, some sons. Yeah, that has the hair that's like on the porthole and that weird. Uh, that vision used to freak me out when I was a that kid. That didn't freak me out, but I used to like the first time I watched it. I had a hard time like when they they did that shot of when uh, Rennie is driving the police car. And she's gonna ram, ram little mutant Jason. <laughs> yeah, those zoom ins on the face are like, I don't wanna see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that whole thing. Uh, it's it's weird. Why why is she having these? Um, well, yeah, the last, last two movies we had weird like vision ties and some carry level shit. Like she's seeing this little kid Jason pop up in places. She's all of a sudden washing her hands in the sink and it's blood all of a sudden. He like, comes out of the mirror. Real weird. That's some poltergeist kind of shit there. Yeah. Maybe they're ch- maybe they're chasing poltergeist two or three's kind of heels and like, well, that look, we're worked there. Let's try something, you know, like that. I, here's the one thing I will say. Uh, despite a lot of the weird <clears throat> holes and stuff in this movie that I, I'm going to get to my, at least my, my main gripe about this movie. <laughs> um, but Rob Head, for better or worse, uh, there is a very unique visual style in this movie with those flashbacks, with those weird apparition uh, moments, and uh, even the kills. Some of the stuff is just shot so uh, differently from the rest of the stuff in the franchise. Like when they're down in the sewer and everything's wet and kind of dripping and the lights are swaying back and forth, like it's, it's a really different approach to the Friday the 13th uh, formula and like I said for better or worse uh, it's, I it's, really like it it's <clears throat> captivating it's unique it stands stands out mm-hmm. differently from, from the rest I also like that dude that's working down there in the John sewer. Carpenter yeah John Carpenter <laughs> and that they even have a John Carpenter level esque score mm-hmm. going on when they're trying to do walk out which of course sewers flood every night at midnight with toxic uh-huh. waste. So Here we send, go. Let's go. Send one guy down there to Bucky 2.0. I don't know to check it out. <laughs> I don't know what he's technically doing down there. Why he's the only one down there? How come he doesn't have at least a partner or a walkie-talkie something to yeah. you know? Like it's I'm not clear. done. Let me. I got to get out of here before you open that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you clear? <laughs> yeah. There's there got to be like a a two party system in this involved. <laughs> it's yeah. The city of New York for fuck's sakes. I mean, otherwise they're just they're just killing maintenance men yeah, every. Night. Yeah. They're just liquefying maintenance guys left and right in New York City. <laughs> it's a rotating job. Yeah. I. You know. Don't even bother training them anymore for it. So since we're here, we're going to talk about it. Uh, And I've scoured everything, right? I've watched Crystal Lake Memories. I've watched His Name Was Jason. I've watched uh, commentaries. I've watched all types of stuff, different interviews. Rob Hedden talks about every aspect of this movie. 
never once has been like so yeah, the sewers flooding with toxic like like he never like the acknowledges closest, why that was written in the script. The closest he came is that was his explanation for which is is, is weird cuz he's like, "All right, we're finally taking Jason's mask off in this movie." I'm like, "Well, he just didn't they did it in the last They do movie. it all the time. They do it every I said they do it a lot of the time. <laughs> like it's a kind of more weird to not see it happen than to see it happen. Mm -hmm. But his solution for like how are we going to make it look okay or passable or where you're not quite able to see everything so super clearly, and he's like, toxic waste, throw. Because on top of flooding the sewers with this shit, there's this random <laughs> buckets of it. Sealed buckets of yeah. toxic waste, just it, fucking chilling. Hanging out in the sewer, which, of course, this movie shot out of order, so you can see when, she, when Rennie throws this bucket of sludge on Jason's face, it's green. But you can see in previous shots, some little bit of that green residue left on the mask. Mm-hmm. Because uh, didn't shoot this in order, so like yeah, a little bit of that toxic waste is coming later. Yep. And he makes, of course, sounds when he gets yeah. hit with it, which the sounds don't bother me. But I never, and this is something I never, never considered until probably within the last couple of years. Is we get to the end of the movie, he's trying to oh, grab yes. oh, them yes. on the ladder. Jason turns around to see the water toxic waste coming at him. <laughs> the fucking point break wave. Yeah, and I, I never ever took it as this is where Jason speaks and he speaks like a little kid. Like his mouth is moving, but I always just thought that was just like playing in his head. Nope, he straight up says mommy in this movie. Talking like a little kid. Like I never, never thought that was him speaking. Then of course he's like, that's actually Kane puking. Because he can puke on command. That's yeah. like one of the things that Kane like really prides himself on. Is <laughs> he just he, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna puke. He just can. We make movies here. <laughs> so yeah, that's actual Kane uh, just chugging a lot of water and then vomiting it up on command oh, like that. That's fucking gross, dude. Which is as much of a problem you have with the toxic waste flooding the uh, sewers. I have the equal amount is. Uh, our two our, our two survivors are at the top of this ladder like at a grate trying to get out they can't get out of the grate mm -hmm. so this flood of toxic waste this floods this uh, sewer dissolves Jason yeah right at their fucking boot heels yeah so about four and a half feet up from where the top of all this is like the fumes, I feel like would just eat their just lungs. Just let go alive. of the ladder because you can't. You're, you're not conscious anymore. <laughs> Fall back into it. They should still come out of that sewer looking like the dude from RoboCop. Just uh, and then the dog just eats their corpses. <laughs> yeah, then the dog is is got some kind of disease, and this how that's how that's how the apocalypse begins. <laughs> is gosh, what's that dog's name? We should know the name of that oh, dog. Oh, uh, it's Toby, but I feel like. We, I know we've looked up what the real name is because that's a, that's a bizarre thing in movies is they never just give the dog the dog's real name like no it's got to have a different name right which is why weird. the fuck does it matter it doesn't matter is the dog gonna get fan mail is the dog <laughs> gonna get stocked even if even the worst case scenario the dog what gonna live another 10 years and he's not gonna live any longer because dogs don't live that long like why change the name of a dog for a movie <laughs> which also you gotta kinda call bullshit on that fantastical element of the dog finding them at the end. Like, it's New York City. Granted, you and I have never been, but uh, I don't nope. imagine that uh, if you let your pet loose, <laughs> uh, you know, the second you fucking arrive, and then know. 16 seen... hours later, the dog just finds you out in front of a fucking Macy's on... Uh, Haven't you seen all those YouTube videos of like, this cat was separated from her family three years ago, and they've finally been reunited because the cat just walked in this <laughs> north direction and Till finally found them. I I saw Homeward Bound. Yeah. Um. So I know how it works. Uh. Also, let's do a little oddball story. When I was in high school, I had a cat, and it got outside, and it got pregnant, and it had a bunch of kittens, and uh, <clears throat> my cousin Travis took those kittens, and his mom lived maybe six miles outside of town and she wanted the kittens so take those kittens out there she has these kittens for a couple of months they start to grow 
one day I come home from school, all of those kittens are on my porch meowing for their mom who's inside my house. They made it all the way back to my house. So maybe it's not that crazy, I guess, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Science, bitch. I don't know. They got fucking tracking beacons in their brains or what? So, so other like key fun scenes in this movie we didn't get to yet. Uh, a couple that I like. Uh, one that uh, the wife and I both enjoy is when uh, Jason is killing uh, Tamara. He yes. uh, kills her with a shard of glass, but we always really like because it's in a bathroom, so. Jason busts through this door, knocks her against the wall. He walks up to like the vanity mirror in the bathroom and just fucking punches the shit out of this <laughs> mirror. And you can just see It's like Predator 2 punch. Like it's <sighs> awesome. You you can see the rage in in Kane punching that mirror out. It's bam. <laughs> that that always was a fun shot. And of course we have the infamous uh, Kelly Hugh yeah, Kelly Hugh with the teleportation on the on the dance floor <laughs> with that stunt woman taking the most incredible dead fall from getting choked up in the air. It's amazing. Does not protect herself at all. Like falls just like he had just murdered somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and you got of course the the trivia bits of uh, Ken Kersinger as the mongoloid dude in the in the diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's thrown against another uh, mirror, and he also has this, this double scene where he takes what would you call one of the, the least sh- least impressive uh, car getting hit by a car stunts in oh, movies. Oh, it's horrible the way that he he like you see him move his hands to protect his midsection and takes this bump and then does this thing when he spins out. I don't know what it is. I hate it. Uh, and then the other scene where he's Jason is when he's coming off of the subway. And they knock him onto the uh, tracks and he gets electrocuted. Even Kane. uh, There's some interviews with Kane where he's like, yeah, when I finally got to see those dailies, I was like, why is he walking like that? He looks down. He does like the, like, and Kane's like, I would never look down. I don't look down. And this asshole is fucking up this shot. (laughs) This asshole's looking down. Why why you fucking up how Jason walks? Ken Kurzinger, you big lumbering bastard. Maybe that was his entire interview process for Freddy vs. Jason. Like, so why should we hire you instead of Kane? He just dropped his head down. <laughs> and like, oh. oh, that's a whole new range of emotion. <laughs> well, this guy's bringing something different to the table. Hired. Yeah, let's put him in fucking six-inch platform shoes, and he'll do a great job. Not, we'll get to that. Uh, fuck. Ken we'll Kersinger. get to that in a few weeks. <laughs> and then probably the most famous, I, I feel at least the famous shot of this movie is they they had like what a couple hours. On Times Square, or they got the mm. got to section it off and do a shot of Kane, like just looking around at it's Times real, Square. It's real good. That right there could have been the whole commercial. I know they did that cool like Sinatra type yeah, deal. That teaser thing, which they also had issues with the poster design because the original poster was the I Heart New York with Jason slashing through it. Mm-hmm. Tourist boards, like that. We don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great big fan of that. You guys can't do that. Yeah, I I agree. That could have been, that could have been just the trailer, and I'd have been like sold. <laughs> I never even saw that teaser trailer until I ended up buying the DVD set. I'd never seen it before. Really? So it looks yeah. To me, it looks weird to see Kane it looks Jason like from behind. He looks yeah. It looks like he's in like a trench coat or something. It looks like first. a tra- like a slimy trash bag. <laughs> Which maybe well, that's why Ken slides off that car so easily because he's just covered in KY jelly. Yeah, that's the other thing you Whoop. can't talk about this movie without talking about the fact that Jason is perpetually gooey. He is in super gooey. Tire move like he seriously never dries off. And when you think he might dry off, it fucking rains on him and he walks on the bottom of the fucking ocean to New York. So he's wet the rest of the movie. Yeah, there's the other debate we have is does Jason walk on the bottom of the ocean Pirates of the Caribbean style to get to the harbor in New York, or is he it's just like holding... Land of the Dead? They just fucking yeah. walk. <laughs> or is he just holding on to the bottom of the raft and just floating with them, <laughs> adding extra weight for ju- for the two guys uh, paddling, like biding his time for yeah. the perfect moment to murder them individually. <laughs> He's playing the long game of like if I tire them out for, by adding an extra two hundred something pounds to their to their rowing process, like they're not going to have enough strength with them to fight with me. Once we get to where we're going. I have never once in my brain visualized Jason hanging onto that stupid fucking raft. 
Because he had this picture that he's just got his two hands on two ends of the like raft. Like two ropes, like. Yeah. <laughs> And he and his like just feet just dangling in the water, <laughs> sharks like, and shit, <laughs> letting the current just kind of pull him. So he's at that weird kind of angle like this the whole time, just still breathing even though it's yeah. underwater. The next time we meet Kane, we're gonna bring that up. We're so here. like, how the fuck did you get to New York? <laughs> That's our new debate: is so, so did you walk there or did you just catch a ride? <laughs> And what he says will be gospel, and we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it'll be that'll be the next. All right, sign our autograph. Who won this debate? <laughs> and I will brag to the end of time if I win two debates. And he just held on to that shit. I'm telling you, he walked. <laughs> if he walked, I feel like it would take him another like three days to get there. Uh, I know we don't necessarily do. He is teleported that way. He's teleporting in this movie. He's teleports to the dock from. <laughs> he teleports straight from the dock from the boat sinking all the way to the dock. <laughs> I know we don't necessarily do our Gwildor Awards for the podcast, but I have one anyway. I don't know the dude's name, but whoever that asshole is who climbs the fucking tower to try to get away from Jason. Oh, like the like the warm-up suit guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a fucking moron, and he deserved to die. Like, you come face-to-face with Jason, so you can't go forward. You can turn around. He goes up. <laughs> he go- yeah, where do, these, where do these fucking rungs go? They go up, stupid. Like, you're not getting away. Well, you're going to swing swing around to the other side of the pole and go back down when Jason gets up there? Like what's the what was the end game? What's the fucking plan? I I, I don't know nothing on that one. <laughs> so that but guy we, can eat my ass. We don't have like well, we don't normally have the Gwildor, but we do have exclusive to the podcast the Brown Panty Award. Do you have a Brown Panty Award winner? Uh, I got it's a toss up between two. It's either Miss Van Dusen cuz she didn't do nothing wrong or <laughs> Kelly Hugh. Kelly Hugh is essentially a you know she she's a moral compass but it, it she keeps succumbing to peer pressure so she's not a bad person she doesn't want to be a bad person she's just influenced by a bad person so I like her hmm. and I do like her death so uh, yeah I, Kelly you could have survived I'm cool with that she can get my brown panty award uh, mine goes to the person I wanted to live much, much longer than they do in this movie. I think they're killed way too soon. I could have used a whole lot more, but I give mine to JJ. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. I she love... didn't do anything to hurt anybody either. No, she just wanted to rock out in the power <laughs> room. I love JJ. I oh, love yeah. her look, her style, everything. I would love if she, if someone found her and put her on the con circuit. Because, my goodness, would we be the two knuckleheads that would make a beeline? Like, fucking JJ from Takes Manhattan is here. Yeah. Sign this way and you're an asshole. <laughs> so she she totally uh, just kind of disappeared like Melissa from Part 7. She doesn't have the death rumors around her. <laughs> yeah, Melissa's still very much alive. I think she's dead. A, you think she's dead? I think she's dead. Huh. I don't know. Well, uh, listeners? We didn't mention that in the last show. There's a weird rumor going around on is Melissa the actress alive or dead I'm gonna say alive maybe she's just I say dead all right well there's another debate between you and me (laughs) my professional opinion is she's better than shit yeah she she done been dead (laughs) um all right so brown panty award um and we've spent about 40 plus minutes talking about this movie so what does that mean evil Uh, I, I Honestly, it means we could go on another 40 talking yes. about this, because this is just a fantastic goddamn it's, movie. And it's an easy discussion, especially sitting right next to you, <laughs> being like, oh, what about this? What about this? Oh, before we move on, let's talk about the fact that uh, the one shot, I just wanted to bring this up, because not a lot of people notice it, the shot when they're boarding the uh, life raft to escape, and you get that <laughs> uh, you get that wide up shot of Jason standing there menacingly looking at them. VHS, you can't tell. I don't. I'm pretty sure I can't tell on DVD, but I know for a fact on Blu-ray I can see it plain as day. This fucking sprinkler pole that's spinning, that's creating the rain. And now I just can't see any movie with rain without going. Like, where is it? Yeah, I'm gonna find it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna find the fucking sprinkler. I thought for sure you're gonna be like this. And where the scene? Is, where is the scene where Jason throws the dog down to them oh, in the boat? Yeah, that's also what the fuck? How did he? That no one even says, or do they say it in the movie? How did that dog get down here anyway? Like, I don't. Now you're mixing that with Monster Squad. Like, how did that dog go. get up here? There you go. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, how does that dog get down into that lifeboat? And why, okay, dogs have claws. You would put them in an inflatable fucking raft while you're on your way to fucking New York. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Toby, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Toby Wong, Toby Chuck. Well, well, <laughs> well, maybe the bottom of the raft is just, it's not, in, that's not an inflatable part. It's just uh, hard plastic or something. Yeah, it's just hard plastic. And you can you just paddle faster. You won't get water inside that thing. <laughs> or you just, you know, you have the Uncle other Uncle Charles just sucking it up and spitting it out. Yeah, you have Uncle Charles just cupping it with his hand and throwing it over <laughs> his shoulder as you're going. <laughs> For fucking <laughs> hundreds <laughs> of miles. Like, all right, you want to row or you want to throw? <laughs> Which one do you want to do? Here's the other debate, real quick, before we move on to all of our other segments. How close do you think they were to New York? Because that trip is only a two-hour trip. How much do you think they had to row? Because in the movie, they do it until... It seems like sunrise. Like, it seems like it sunrises because it's all foggy and really brightly lit. You know, I... And then it turns dark again. And then I, they're in New York and dark. I feel like they maybe went, like, a thousand feet out of the water. <laughs> they were like, we're almost there. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel like the boat went a thousand feet out and then sank because it's not moving. So they had to just row the rest of the trip. <laughs> so I would say three-fourths of the trip, they're rowing it. Oof. Because that boat never goes anywhere. Sidebar to all that. We like to, to, for proof that we enjoy this movie so much, this is like 10 in the morning, and we did not pre-prepare like prepare for this. We could just, no, Jason we, takes Manhattan, we can just fucking go. We can just bring it up. So fucking going. <laughs> so begrudgingly, we'll move on. To the next segment of this, which again, since we have covered this in the live stream, I don't know if these are going to be repeated one stars, All but right. we're going to take a look at the Amazon Uno Star Reviews. Hated it. Hated it. <laughs> All right, first up. Horror Fan LA on January 30th, 2020. Well, that's why they don't like it. They're from LA. Not I love LA. <laughs> I can't stand this film. It's not even campy like the others. Just plain bad. Feels like it was written by some fans whose ideas consist of radioactive waste and letting Jason stand there while some high school kid punches him 30 times. <laughs> the deaths in this film are a joke and are substandard to the other Friday the 13th films. Absolutely embarrassing and a waste of time. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, especially, okay, compare it to the previous entry. Seven is amazing, but all the deaths are cut short. Eight, for some reason, most of the gore is intact. In fact, replacing the uh, dart kill with the fucking sauna rock is way more gory. Way more gory. Showing uh, Tamara with the glass in her back, which there's a deleted scene with oh, a yeah. whole bunch of glass. But um, <laughs> there's like 22 glass shards in her. Yeah, but I mean, and he just kept going. I mean, for the most part, you know, Julius gets his head knocked off. Uh, Wayne gets lit on fire. Um, the one, you know, uh, there's a lot of decent deaths in this movie. That... Wayne shotgun blasts the <laughs> mechanic in the chest, <laughs> which in the uh, camera shot, he looks like Dan from Nightmare Four. It's true, he really does. I was like, Dan? <laughs> Dan? Hey, right. Wayne, want to make babies? <laughs> I can't remember if this is one that we had before, but it sound, the name sounds familiar. But This is Weak Heart for Life. Yeah, I'm, I'm remembering this. July 20th, 2020. Uh, rings a bell because this is the dude who Weak says... Weak Heart for Life, yep. Yep. Uh, he's, everything is in caps, so... One star... <clears throat> Dumbest film of the Friday the 13th. Okay, first off, this movie makes no sense. At the end of part seven, Jason was supposedly finished off. Now all of a sudden, he is a he is a Manhattan. He is a Manhattan. <laughs> we never learned how he gets to New York, other than he supposedly swam down river and somehow got in the ship. Ah, what? <laughs> Jason knows how to swim. Meow. <laughs> How did he take swimming lessons? I thought according to the first film, he drowned. Now he can swim after being set on fire at the end of part seven. All I can say is Paramount should have stopped while they were ahead. Dumb, dumb film. <laughs> dumb, dumb film. Dumb, dumb film. Uh, so he is an alcoholic beverage. He is a Manhattan. Um, <laughs> I like right. the misspellings in there too. Like, he can do this. Meow. Meow. Maybe he just was adding a little sarcasm to his <laughs> meow. Meow. Nah. All I right. can appreciate that as a man who has done that on film. <laughs> well, <laughs> next up we have Adam Johnson. So close to Ahmed. 
<laughs> on January 12, 2017, Adam says one star, time is too precious to suffer through the productions such as. Oh, okay. He's one of those guys that starts that mm. as his title and then like, oh fuck, I gotta do that. I gotta write more on a description. So he starts that all over again. Time is too precious to suffer through productions such as Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> they don't get to New York City until halfway through the film. Grumpy Gus. That's going to be the majority of the complaints, I, I feel. Like, uh, <laughs> false advertisement. It, it's, it's, a, it's a movie about being on a boat. Well, it says it takes Manhattan. It doesn't say how long it takes him right, to get right. to Manhattan. That's like Titanic being a you know four-hour movie. With, like, this is supposed to be about the boat sinking, and it doesn't sink until the last... I would love if Titanic was just about, like, <laughs> the, ending, the ending shot is them, like, leaving the docks. <laughs> it's all about loading the boat and Oh, shit my up. God. And then you have to wait fucking a year for the sequel. The sequel is Four like... Four hours of loading the boat and fucking... <laughs> I want to make Lord of the Rings out of Titanic. <laughs> I, I need to own Titanic on Blu-ray just because. <laughs> I want the second movie to be from them from the dock to when they hit the iceberg is the end of the second movie. Oh. The whole third movie is the sinking. Yes. Because I think it that like someone put it on YouTube. It's like a three hour, almost two... Two and a half, three hour thing of uh, like in real time the Titanic sinking. Yeah, I you watched can watch it because we're weird like that. I literally watched the yeah. whole thing. It's like a digital, like you yeah, can go through digital see, boat. Yeah, and you can see like the levels filling up with water. Mm -hmm. Boy, we yeah. <laughs> we're a unique bunch. <laughs> Much like Dan Frost here on December eighteenth, twenty sixteen. Stay. He says one star, one star. <laughs> That's okay. It. That's it. Yeah, he titles it One Star, and his description is, okay. All right. Well, I mean, I can't argue with him. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's the most unarguable one star maybe ever we've ever covered. Okay. <laughs> or those guys are like, ah, I loved it. <laughs> and uh, to wrap up uh, the one star, I was really trying to make sure I didn't find anything that was be done before, but this one I just couldn't pass up just because of the age of it. From Lady Lestat. One star on August 5th, 2001. Jesus Christ. That's, yep, yeah, that's like 20 years and some change now. That, I like this, Matt. That's 20 years ago this was, was done. And when she wrote this review, it was about 20 some odd years between that and when the movie came out. Wow. All right. Uh, so, Lady Lestat says, One star is really being too kind. They have taken the Friday the 13th sequels way too far with this one. When did Jason stop slashing teenagers in Camp Crystal Lake, get on a boat, kill all the passengers, and get off in Manhattan? This movie takes stupidness to a whole nother level. Just wait. <laughs> I get all these questions, but there is not one question mark in all these questions. Right. Um, okay. Fine. I mean, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> You don't have to like it, but you, you can't stay here or something. You may not like it, but accept it. That's right. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Well, that's the end of the Amazon One Star Reviews. That's all the ones I was able to pull up on this one. That I was trying my best to make sure I didn't repeat. I may have repeated some of those, but hopefully that's those okay. are all It's been new. like a year. It's been like a year since it's we covered it on the channel. like a year, and I couldn't pass up. Uh, we will be hard for life. I hope I keep finding him for the rest of the series. <laughs> I hope he just drunkenly wrote reviews of the entire, the entire franchise, movie by movie. All in caps. Well, now that we're done with the Amazon one-star reviews, that can only mean one thing, Evil. What does that mean? <sighs> I guess it's time to play the game. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game. It's all about the game, and you play it, and there is no more restaurant. <laughs> That's true. There is no more restaurant. The whole fucking... 500 people in the class are fucking drowned like rats. Gone. Yeah, that's that's the scene we needed to see is the whole the rest of the whole graduating class like, drowning. Up to their neck in water like Miss Van Dusen said no wait <laughs> over here. Should we leave her job? Just gonna stay here and ride it out. <laughs> There's only one million. <laughs> yep, they're Just gone. Just waiting for one dude to be like salt water wang. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking excellent. Wow. So, what is the prop game, Raj? All right, brief plot synopsis of the prop game. 
You gotta pick a prop from the movie, but it has to be a deep cut. It can't be a prop that uh, everybody knows and everybody wants. You can't say, I want Jason's hockey mask. I want the Statue of Liberty. What? No. I want you, the Statue of Liberty. You can't have those things. You gotta pick something weird. You gotta pick something that's a deep cut. That's why you're listening to the Deep Cut Podcast. So, that being said, evil. You can go first this this time around. What do you got? I got to give props initially to Rob, the director, because he has the, one of the greatest props uh, from this movie as a deep cut. He has both the Flying V guitar, which I kind of think I want, and he has the original production slate with the uh, working title under it, which, do you remember what the working title for this movie is? Uh, One second. Is It's not the Lazarus. No. Nope, nope. That's what we named our hockey mask when we were doing hockey masks. The original working title for this was Ashes to Ashes. There it is. Okay, yeah. The Ashes to Ashes slate. Uh, so, for me, of course, I cannot not take the uh, drum barrel that Charles is drowned in. Oh, oh, not the one in the sewer. The- <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the big drum barrel. Okay. With yeah. the fake rat floating in that shit. <laughs> that is good. Um, Which I'd actually take some like green... A saran wrap, put it over the top of the barrel, and put a fake right on top of it, so it looks like it's floating in sludge. Yeah, you you uh you put some resin in there, so it, it hardens. Yeah, yeah, it yeah lives there it forever. Is. Oh gosh, that'll make put it. Put a light, a green light underneath it. Ooh, now now we're Fog talking. Machine. I'm gonna wreck this prop and make <laughs> it make it make it fun. We could probably just do this with a. I probably can find me. There's the thing. I'm gonna try to find me a barrel, and we're gonna try to make that that prop now. Mm. I'm gonna find me a fucked up, beat the shit barrel. We're gonna drill out the bottom of it, get up, get a, get some resin on the top, and a fake rat. I'm gonna make that shit, uh, just like the toilet. I'm gonna make of Jason from Part Two. All right. Well, mine is weird. Um, Good. Mine, mine is an odd, strange thing. You may remember a couple of folks from this movie uh, who uh, are nefarious hoodlums. They, uh, you know, they're they're slanging cane, Jojo. And uh, they kidnap Rennie, and they're gonna drug her up and, and rape her. And Jason actually comes and rescues her. So uh, I've always loved this scene because Jojo, I believe, is his name, the fella who needs to go get some more drugs. I forgot my wallet. Yeah, yeah, right. You're he, paying for shit. He, now. Do- I don't believe he has a wallet. Like it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's forgot like my wallet, home. It's like a fucking. It's like a New York Times page like folded up with money fucking squished in it i just figured it was like a newspaper over a pistol yeah pretty much <laughs> That's my wallet uh and so jojo he uh he comes back and comes across jason and it's it's always hilarious to me that he shoots him and every shot it's like it's not working so he continues to step forward <laughs> shit <laughs> like that's gonna make the bullet hurt worse stepping forward one more step so uh, Jay- less, less time for the bullet to travel. And Jason slams his head through that pipe, which is an awesome kill. That's hilarious. Super fucking underrated kill, because it's like, that would do it. That's that a w- wrestling move, like a mm-hmm. turnbuckle shot. Yep, the old turnbuckle slam. So my prop from that whole scene is uh, JoJo's headband. Oh, that like bandana thing yeah, he's I wearing? Yeah, I want his bandana. I noticed that too a lot when he gets smashed into that. I like the th- I was kind of, I was hoping you weren't going to say that uh, needle. No, I don't want the hair I'm like, needle. holy shit. Because I'm like, holy shit, how fucking in- industrially made is this needle that goes through a dude's chest from the back to the front and the needle is still on the end of it. Mm-hmm. That's a super strong needle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, you know, you got to have medical grade super. That's uh, made, made from titanium and vibranium. And yeah, to do heroin. T-1000. It, yeah, it's got to be real good. Liquid metal. <laughs> Indy mini palioloi or whatever the fuck you fucking Indy mini palioloi. A bunch of words. Just the hell together. does that mean? Is it really liquid to metal? Yeah, it's just an Austrian just fucking saying a bunch of vowels. Hey, Mini Pali Alloy. <laughs> so I want that bandana because uh, I've I've always loved his getup. You know, I don't know what it is. It's like a gray shirt and like a fucking ho- or a, a gray undershirt, like a fucking Hawaiian overshirt, like baggy pants. I don't know what he's wearing. It's weird. It looks like he should be a fucking pirate. And <laughs> maybe he is a pirate. I mean, this is a movie about boats. Maybe he's a pirate. <laughs> uh, well. He's robbing. That's what pirates do. Yeah, he's so, heathen. Uh, yeah, he's a heathen. A thieving heathen. So I want JoJo's fucking bandana. I can't pass it up. Man, that's... I could have thought I was like Julian's head or Julian's uh, Julius? track suit. Julius himself. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the 40-foot 
a CB cord on the police car. Oh, dude, that's another scene. I mean, we're at the end, but okay. They're quite clearly in fucking Vancouver when that cop... <laughs> Uh, like, oh, he's probably lost. Like, he does the fucking... That's Irish. <laughs> oh, wow, well, I can't fucking talk like a... I can't, I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's probably lost. Yeah, but he does like a weird... His dialect is very strange, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden it switches to New York when he's like, dispatch, dispatch! Like, he, he kind of fucking, like, gets a little bit more guttural, a little bit more manly. But when he's just talking to them, walking back to the car, boy, it's so Canadian. Like, you are... Hey, this bitch. M- Mr. fucking Buttersworth. Yeah. You- <laughs> hey, this bitch. <laughs> he probably got himself lost. <laughs> I can't. Why am I yeah. fucking going Irish? I can't. I got himself lost. <laughs> Give me a cup of hot to joke Tim Hortons. Yeah, you know, uh, Canada and... Uh, Canada and Ireland are right very... Right next to each other. Yeah, it's, it's basically like a subsection. You could walk from one to the other one. I failed geography. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so that. But you gotta know geology to <laughs> tackle graboids. That's true. One of them seismo. Seismo jiggers. <laughs> Careful how you say that. Mm-hmm. Don't want to get canceled by a mispronunciation of jigger. <laughs> seismo jigger. On that note, guys, uh, I suppose we should probably get going. Because after all, there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's gotta watch them. So why not us, right? I'm gonna go find that deckhand. <laughs>